This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. It's that time. An author. Offensive production number one. Number two. I forgot. <laughs> Golfer. It'd be like going on a three-person best shot and we were saying pull back. you got to make a 25-footer every time. Uh, you wouldn't putt first. I'd have Tim putt first. And one heck of a TV personality. This game is for the Cooper Cup. <laughs> it's the Forum's Jeff Kolpak. Four. I should have yelled two. All right. We've had some unbelievable pregame moments in our time together. That one, Dr. J at Normal <laughs> yeah. Illinois, yep. 12 years ago, one of my all-time favorites. I'm pretty sure I have a new number one, and that happened I think so. Saturday morning uh, with your guy there. <laughs> Racer one. He kept nudging me. This is oh. <laughs> Go back. I didn't see that live. I went back. I did not know he nudged me. He was like, well, you guys are taking too much of his attention. He's like, hey, I'm the star here. I'm racer oh, one. Hello. Man. Hello. Well, the best part is the first pick we went to, he, he had his mouth on the deck. <laughs> so we go, this could be really bad. That was awesome. Good work on that, man. That would buy, that, that people were blowing up my my feet on this on Saturday. Went out to the Equine Center on yeah. Friday, and actually, I'd been in email contact with uh, their director of the program, Shay, during the week, and and she said, "Well, come out to the come out to the Equine Center." Yeah. And what an impressive facility that is. I mean, the NDSU one looks really nice, right? It, this one's a lot bigger, and it's just such a it's Kentucky, You're it, right? It, it's it's it's, it's horse it's racing, thoroughbreds. thoroughbreds. Yep. That's a uh, racer one's a quarter horse, quarter horse gelding. And so I went to the, went to the they took me to where he's at. He's a star out there. Oh, I don't he's, doubt that. Oh yeah, he's a prima donna. He's one of those. <laughs> but I thought it was just good to be around him Friday and, you know, and get some of the history and yeah. cuz yeah, maybe there's some familiarity when he brought him on set as he's clearly <laughs> clearly it seemed that there was there. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, that but was yeah, fantastic. Murray Murray was they were great. Yes. Uh, the people around there were great. They're awesome. I know the TV crew yeah. and production had nothing but good things yeah, to say. Anything we asked for, they gave us, which was much fantastic. better than the yep. football team. Uh, oh my goodness! That's a uh, that's a long road to hoe there for Jody Wright. I don't know how that's gonna, you know, the the league lost Western Illinois, which was the the doormat of the league. Now Murray has taken that. I don't know how they get better. That's the question. And I wrote this. I think I, I, I led with it that Jody Wright during the week said nobody's gonna feel sorry for us. Yeah. Blah blah blah. And I wrote. By the start of the third quarter, uh, I felt sorry for him uh, because, you know, we had been there for over a day. So you're seeing the, the lay of the land, and you're thinking, how are they going to recruit here? Yep. Because the nearest major airport's Nashville, over two hours away. I guess you can go to Paducah, but apparently it's a whiny <laughs> that's road. A, it's a, that's not a straight shot, I nope. can tell you that. Uh, to yep. get there. And so, how do you, A, how do you get kids in here? You think NDSU has a geographical issue. Huh. You fly into Hector and you're dang near on campus. You're right there. Yep. I mean, it is. You're, you're, if you're landing from the south, you're seeing the indoor football facility and the dome going, oh, hey. Yeah. Hey. Yep. It's right there. Yep. Murray, I don't know. No. And, and there's so many schools around there, too. Arkansas State's, what, a couple hours, maybe less to the south. You got Memphis. You got all the. SIU's right there, too. SIU's yeah, 40 right minutes away. So. And you got that competition. Yep. And SIU probably would out recruit oh, Murray yeah. for most guys. I would think so. The stadium, albeit on one side, is Big Ten big. Yep. On the other, is nothing. Nothing. It's nothing. nothing. And Sam reported that a couple times during the game. Like, just it, how quiet. There's no. There's just no atmosphere on the visitor sideline, and the Bison were rolling, and just you couldn't tell. Granted, there was nobody there at the game anyway, but that's a that's a difficult yeah, job. I, I just feel I, I feel sorry for Jody yeah. Wright because he seems like a really cool dude and a nice guy, and he's got his work cut out for him. I guess he's the right guy, and he has all these SEC contacts. Yes, we'll see. he's going to need a, He's going to need every one of them. But to, to get build a team there. from you know the portal, we saw on Saturday how that works out sometimes. Yeah. And their best defensive player, James Camden, got hurt. He broke his wrist the week prior against Illinois State. I, is he? Does he make a couple more plays? Maybe, but that just that's tough. Is there one guy you saw on the field in Murray that you'd say you'd want at NDSU? Is there one guy? No. Receiver maybe be a fourth or fifth yeah, guy but, here. I mean the the bison top four are pretty good. I'm not taking I no, I don't I don't think so. Not to my I'd have to go back and I I'll know watch study the tape, the tape but, but I don't think so. I don't think so either. 
Email comes into the show. Uh, Racer one, uh, maybe I'm pretty sure he thought Colpack's head was an apple. Oh, <laughs> crispy apple. Yeah. <laughs> That was the highlight of the day. There's no doubt about it. Let's talk about uh, what we saw from the Bison. First, uh, Bryce Lance, three more touchdown receptions. First Bison receiver to have three uh, touchdown receptions in a game since Cole Heckendorf did that in 2008 against Austin P. Uh, he's that He's that guy. He's that dude. And with Makai Collins out, he didn't play in the game. I'm not sure if he's going to play this week. That you go to him, Jeff, he's going to make a play. That one that Cam Miller said, hey, this is going to be a touchdown. And it ended up being a touchdown. Well, for one, it was a perfect throw was. from Cam. And two, Bryce has got some pretty good speed and moves. Look at it. Gets on the inside yep. uh, portion of the, of the D-back. And, and nice catch, too, being in a contested area. He's got it. He's got everything you'd want in a, in a receiver. He's got yes. height. He's got speed. He's got smarts. His I think hands he's pretty are good, tough. too, man. Got good he hands. I don't think he's really dropped anything that I that remember. Was, that was my next thing. Like, when the ball's been thrown his way, I'd say 98% of the time he's caught it. Remember, Christian Watson had the drops yes. he's early in his career. Yep. Got better as his career went on. Doing okay in the NFL now. Is Bryce Working. an NFL prospect? That size is going to get some attention. For he's, sure. He's got to put... Uh, He's got to put probably some more on tape. We'll see how the rest of this year goes. I mean, he's up to, whatever, 40-some-odd receptions now, and eight of them are for touchdowns. I, mean, I wasn't sure of his speed, but he seems to be out yeah, running, guys. He can get down the field, too. Uh, I like to see how the rest of the year plays out, but measurable-wise, he's already got he's got a couple of those checked off that'll get. And the last name, knowing who his brother is, that will get that will get the NFL scouts to pay attention, I'd imagine, if this continues into this time next year, if we're doing it again. I, you think of NDSU as O-line U, and for good reason. Yep. What is there, five guys in O-linemen in the, in the NFL right now? Now that Christian Watson's doing his thing, <laughs> um, you know, I, I just th – th there's, there's a precedent there, like, hey, receivers too. The skill positions are there. Lipke's representing, and what Watson's done, no doubt about it. We got our first real look at Nathan Hayes. Give me your assessment of what you saw for the new backup quarterback of the Bison. Decent. Decent. De it looks like their potential's there. I'm not going to already anoint him as a potential starter here down the line, no. but I thought he had good size. I wasn't overwhelmed by any means. It, uh, good arm strength, obviously. We, we knew that. Yep. This was a dicey play. That could have been a pick and gone the other way. It ended yeah, that, up, got, that was he his got first it, one. He yep. got it just enough to Harris that ended up making a big play on that one. It was actually a good play by Chris to get his hands back into the in the ball. Yep. But then he, he that looked just like Cam Miller in the same play there. Right, exactly. I He's got some wheel. He's got to learn how to slide. Paul Sick told, him, told us that right after the game as well, that he's got to duck down. No, that and, was a good throw yep, there. That, that was, was a, a dart. One, the, the Gores, that was the last Bison touchdown. But I think he's got... He's got what you want out of that spot. Now, I don't know how much they're going to need him. That's the question mark. If Cam gets dinged up, this is this is the guy. But you make a good point on this. Is this the future guy? Like we talked about it last week with Peyton's injury, that we believe Peyton is the guy they're tailoring the offense to in 2025. Well, he already said Policy that. Said he already that. anointed that. Beyond that, is Nathan Hayes the guy in 2026? So they need to have two years. I that's the question. I guess it all depends on how good some of these guys they recruit, they bring in are. Is Xander Smith the next guy? I know they like him, but I mean he's. But you haven't seen him, right? I mean he's going to not be here until the fall of twenty twenty five. That's Trey Drake's on the roster. I don't. I don't know. That's the that will play out as this well, goes right along. Now, you know? I'd say he's the favorite for twenty twenty six. If you want to look ahead that much, you have to. But if again, he's still around, but, but again, trying to project that far down the road is, yeah. a, is if, a fool's again, errand. If he's still around, I man. think he's got the prototypical size you'd want. He moves pretty well. He moves better than I thought, and we all know he's got a cannon. You've written about this, mm -hmm. about his baseball background. I have as well. I mean, he's got the best arm on the team. I think we saw that in a couple instances in the game on Saturday. I liked his composure after the game and the post game yep. to when we threw the camera on him really for the first time yep. with a bunch of microphones yep. around him, handled it like a pro. Yep. I agree on that. Um, now let's look ahead here. So they are, the Bison are now eight and one. They have Northern Iowa coming up. We'll get to the Panthers here in a minute, but that bye week staring at him. And there was a bunch more guys that didn't play. Griffin Empey didn't play. I mentioned, Collins didn't play. Logan Cobb didn't play in the game. Will Mostart didn't play in the game. Bison depth is pretty good. This is something you hit on with me on Bison game day on Saturday that, yeah, they're losing guys, but the depth there is pretty, is pretty good, I think, right now. Yeah, just because you're losing guys doesn't mean the next guy is not as good. 
And I think we're seeing that. I, I've, you know, on depth, you always assume like the next guy is just not as good. Yeah. But I think in this case with NDSU, these next guys are just younger. You know, they're just younger. I don't, I don't, I, I think they're every bit as talented as, as the starters. I, I think Enoch Sibamana. Man, a man, monster play there. Austin Altapeter had a big play as well. I think it's going to be hard for Oscar when he comes back healthy to reclaim that's a, a spot. That's a good question there. I think, I mean, the way that Sibamana has played, especially since Valley play started, it's been electric. He's come in and made plays. Illinois State, he did. South Dakota State, he did. Obviously, he did against Murray on, on Saturday. That's I mean, Austin yeah. Altapeter, the Morad guy. Yep. Looked pretty good. He hits hard too. Yep. When he hits, he just you know he he hits you, and that's been impressive there. Jalen Crumby, the reason why Sibamana got the the pick, Crumby blasted the quarterback. He was he was right in Johansson's face. He's got that explosiveness out of the safety spot. Yeah, and Tim said that in the fall, called him a missile. And he and can saw close. It. You want a safety that can close from going from. You want to make the tackle at two yards, not nine yards downfield. And uh, Cody Heisman's a guy that Cody was a, a a good player. We hadn't seen a ton. He's played but unbelievable, right? He's played unbelievable last month. Blocked another kick, right? I mean, he's he's disrupting plays. He's in on a sack as well. That has been a revelation that I I guess I wasn't counting on out of that particular group. We knew the most our twins were back. Duke Nevers there. Heisman was probably clearly number four. I don't think he's clearly number four anymore. No. No. He's starting now. I mean, he's yep. probably number two next to Eli on, in terms of that defensive tackle spot. Yeah, some guys just, they, they continue to get yeah. better. And he's and, and that's at a position where you really need guys to continue to get better and, and just not plateau. Cornerback was another spot. Jalen Duffy didn't play in the game. So it was ACA. Shadimi Alfaro was playing with Marcus Shepard. Do we think Cops going to be back this week? I think I, that was the hope, I believe, that he was. I mean, he was dressed. Cop was fully out there in warm-ups and dress, but he didn't play because they figured they didn't need, him, need him, and that proved accurate. But that cornerback spot is another one there. Jaquees Alexander, that's a guy who started seven nice games last he year. Yep. Right, he got his first pick. They're, they have maybe more guys than at least I thought that can make plays. Now, granted, I know the competition and what they're going to face on Saturday. Maybe not any great shakes either, but... They've proven they can they can do it now in a game. It was an interesting call defensively on Enoch's interception because Duffy blitzed, and the DN Lashaka Rokes dropped back yeah. almost in a pass, deflected it. it. Yep, totally confused Johansson. Yeah. He had no idea what was going on there. McFeely uh, tweeted us. This is right. Jawan Northington, the running back, he could play. He could play for the Bison. Yeah. He's right on that. With yeah, the, with and he the, didn't quit. With the, with, yeah, right, like with, the, with the current group of Bison running backs that are there, he could make his way into that into that group. So he's right on that. Uh, I don't know about anybody else. I, I'll I'll stand on that. I don't no. think there's anybody else on that. Take but, the horse. <laughs> we didn't know we saw him run. If you missed the start of the game, that was it. That was the only time we got to see Racer yeah, run out of the track. That was disappointing, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I know some of our viewers wanted to see it, but Bison defense was... Steve Amata made that point. Yeah, right? they, they, that was After a, the game. A, sort of a point of sarcastic emphasis. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure the horse doesn't get out yeah. there. Let's break. We come back. Uh, Kopak and I both visited with the head football coach after the game about Cole Wisniewski. Yes. Question mark. There's your buddy. <laughs> you got a forearm shiver from the horse. Back on Hot Mike after this. Welcome back, everybody. Back with Jeff Kolpak. Missouri Valley has put out its players of the week. Marty Brown is the newcomer of the week again. Had three touchdowns in the game on Saturday. Yeah, we were just talking that Jerry, he should be in the mix, certainly, for the Jerry Rice Award. Not the favorite, in my opinion, because he's, you know, the, he's, he leads all Division One freshmen rushing. 674 rushing yards. Okay, let's just start one. with that. That's pretty good. And then, you know, you add to that the team and the success and what he's meant to it. And add to that, you know, some of these other guys they always throw out there, some freshman playing on some dog meat team who has to play because they have nobody else, <laughs> racks up some receptions. I will say he's fourth in the Valley with 10 rushing touchdowns. He's going to get to 1,000 yards in the regular season, something the Bison haven't done in forever because, uh, you know, the postseason they've added guys to get over 1,000 yards. Uh, his numbers are going to be there. The Bison are going to be well represented in Frisco because Cam Miller is going to be there for the Walter Payton. I'm fully convinced of and marty's got a heck of a shot to win the jerry rice you don't think the team's going to be there i well i believe there's okay. an out, there's a pretty good chance that they could be there 
Uh, How about Tim, Coach of the Year well. candidate, maybe? Well, it's yeah, probably. Look, we'll how, look how, how they we'll we'll see how it finishes. Yep. But look how they've elevated from so-so non-conference. I think, even though they there were went three, three and one, three and one, yep. but they're defensive. Correct. Defensively, they were suspect after, especially Absolutely. on the rushing side. Yep. And that seems to have been taken care of. East Tennessee State, the entire game, and the Towson second half would make you think that, oh boy. And yeah, they've been dynamite defensively. The Colorado loss is looking better yep. all the time. Yeah, Buffs are now bowl eligible. They're going to get to nine wins. Colorado's going to win nine games, which I don't know if I saw that when we left Boulder that night. I thought Dion's team might win four. I'm pretty sure I said that. Mm-hmm. And they've, they've been, they, that's coaching. I'll give them the nod on that. Just real quick before we get to the Wisniewski stuff. The amount of guys that made their debuts on Saturday. Jack Lewinsky made his first start at left guard. Bo Johnson played quite a bit at right tackle. They moved Miller inside to right guard uh, for a good portion of that game. That's the two cornerstones of the Bison offensive line in 2025. Lewinsky and Johnson. And, and you got Empey back, who's a retro Well, freshman. I would say those two guys must have done pretty well because they never got to third down in the first half. <laughs> no. No. Well, that... First drive, every play was yep. at least 10 yards, yes. except for the touchdown, <laughs> which would have went for 50 had it not been seven <laughs> yards from the end zone. And then defensively, we mentioned the guys that uh, made their debut. Donovan Woolen looked really good out there, played he's, quite a he's bit. He's always impressed me this year, right? just looking at his size. And and I, I just – now he's played four. Yes. He's going to – I think – I think the shirt's off. Yes, I think yep. that'll be – he's going to play uh, the rest of the way. But typically – when the Missouri Valley has unveiled its newcomer team, the Bison have had maybe one or two. That's not going to be the case in 2024. They're going to have three, maybe four guys, because Jackson Williams is going to be on that list as well. Yep. Had a nice catch on Saturday, too, and continues to impress me with his poise and, and you know, on punt return, that doesn't freak him out. Darius Gibbons made it another nice play. That pick in the end zone was really good. That was really good. Yeah. Um, Give me a quick thought. I know you were flying back as I were, so it was about the Jacks and the Coyotes. South Dakota looked like at every opportunity to win that football game. That was their game. chance. That was their chance. Um, yep. And the Jacks ended up winning in overtime. They made a couple of really odd calls as well with, with a halfback yeah, didn't, pass. I wasn't late. able to see that. Actually, Landed was able just to turn it on and saw the last few plays of OT. Yeah. The, there's a couple, of, I thought, really, I don't know if bonehead is the right way to describe it, but South Dakota – Got too cute. It happens all the time in football, whether it's college or professional, where teams are moving the football and then, all right, we're going to throw a trick play in here, and then it turned into a terrible interception. Yeah, I thought UND got too cute on its yeah, two-point yeah, conversion. There's another get, one. Just get the right. ball to Bo Belquist, one of the best playmakers. They don't in, have Belquist or all of football. on the field. In, all, in like, all of football. It just made no sense to me. So that the South Dakota game, Jeff, I think – and I'm included in this. We're, we have recency bias in this. The last time we saw, and this is the play I'm talking about. I don't know what they were doing. And Spalding had the easiest pick of his life um, on a halfback play there. The last time we saw the Coyotes, they lost by a million to the Bison. And in, you've said it to me. They're better than they were last year when they won 10 games. That game at the end of November. Yeah, right there. Right. Picking, I mean, that was the, picking. was the fumble. They got it back to, to tie the game. That game at the end of uh, November is going to be a heck of a ball game. And it could be for... And for the Bison, it could be for not only the conference, but also home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Yeah, really it could be another that. another 13-9 slobber knocker, the way things are going with these yep. teams. That they, they play If you play good D, you got a shot. Now, South Dakota still has to go to Grand Forks. And you and, and, you and, Mike, something. You and Mike would be quick to remind yep. me on that. That's not an automatic for USD. That UND at home is not different. Not in the Alaris. But, nope. but that, that loss now for UND, <sighs> there's no wiggle room now. Well, it's a matter, too, it'll be interesting if UND can get its home crowd advantage because I know hockey's Hockey started up. Hockey will certainly be going by can mid-November. Can you get 10,000, 12,000 yeah. people in there and make a difference? Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, we asked the head football coach. We waited for 10 weeks. It's been 10 weeks to ask him about Cole Wisniewski. Uh, I think the best way to say it is he's going to get he's going to give it a may, shot. There may be a chance. Here. Yeah, yeah, he's going to give it a shot for sure. I think. And now that surgery went better than expected, Tim said the foot came out of surgery better than what it was before. Right. Whatever that means, <laughs> I still don't know exactly what exactly it's going on. No. I'm not sure the head coach knows exactly exactly <laughs> the the procedure what that happened? was done. Yeah. Boy, that's a chance there now. 
from what Paul Sake said, and you can read Jeff's story at Inforum.com, that they're going to set a target date by the by the bye week to see what he can do. I mean, he's been running in the pool. The boot which, has been off. Which those workouts apparently have been going really well, yep. is what he said. I know he told uh, us uh, at Carbondale that surgery went well, x-rays look good. Now it, you, you, You're not going to need any acclimatization period here, Jeff. He knows what he's going to do out there. It's just now how good a shape he is it can be. Politics said there was some swelling, and that's something they're going to have to take care of if he wants to get right. back out and play. A week and a half ago, there was some swelling. But the fact that they're talking about it, I don't think he'd talk about it if it wasn't a better possibility than that. what we think it is. I think he plays in South Dakota. I think so, too. I do. You're not, you know, obviously this week out, bye week, most state is going to be, I think, a trickier game than maybe even I'm anticipating because most oh, Jacob Clark's well. really good. He's a good player. Yep. Um, that's a Bison home game, the final regular season game, but that regular season home game, but that game, the end of the season, if he's trending in that direction, maybe it's before that. Maybe it's most state. I don't know. But the, I think you make a great point. I don't think he speaks this into existence if there's not an opportunity he can come back and play. We've got a whole half hour without talking about Northern Iowa. What's that say about the Panthers right now? That they're not good, man. The, the state of things, Isn't that state of striking affairs. Yeah, right now? absolutely. We've gone a whole show without talking about Mark Farley, without talking about the athletes, that, who are they going to have on the outside. They always have receivers and D-backs. Sergio Morancy's a good player. They're 2-6, yeah. and six, though. Yeah. What they've striking. lost is not close. Listen to these scores in this six-game losing skid. Ready? 34-3, to 36-7, 41-3, to 42-17. 31-7. Last week was 49-42. Finally got some offense going. But look at the numbers they gave up defensively. That's the thing. If anything you could hold your or hold you know hang your hat on with Northern Iowa, they would be awesome defensively. They're horrendous defensively. This Yeah, Xavier Williams isn't walking no. through the door and all those corners and they had NFL guys. Yeah. Omar Cuff was such a good player too yeah, on the outside. Just, they, yep. Linebackers. This would be a game I would always be excited for, no matter what where on the schedule. I think it'll Northern still be Iowa. hard. It should still be a ah, Farley coming to the dome. Yeah, yeah that there's Polisic will definitely have his team's attention, knowing full well about what Northern Iowa's backstory is, despite the fact that they're two and six. Yeah, play the 2008 fight between Pat Pashal and whoever you it was. Could do that. You could play the 2015 game that Polisic was a part of. Both of them, the game in the regular season and that that postseason game. You can't convince me that wasn't the national championship game that year when the Bison and Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa should have won two national titles in NDSU's span. I think they had the team. That it, 15 team was damn good. They yeah. get by NDSU, they win a yes. national title. Yeah, there's no doubt. They yep. would have. Oh gosh, they would have played Richmond. Are you kidding? And then play Jacksonville State. No, that would not have gone well for either one of those teams. Yep. Not against that. Aaron Bailey in that team. Oh my gosh, that would have not gone well. And that's you're right though. That's reflective of where. Remember Things Aaron are out Bailey's 80-yard touchdown run? It was a 6'3", 250-pound quarterback who just went galloping <sighs> down the sideline. He went, wow, yep. okay, that's that's an athlete. There were some dudes on the football yep. field that day, no doubt about it. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk more about right. Northern Iowa on the Bison video blog coming up. Jeff Kolpak, his buddy Racer One, joining us each and every Monday here on Hot Mike. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll visit with the Bison soccer team's Olivia Watson after NDSU won the Summit League Championship yesterday. They'll host the Summit League Tournament. That's coming up when Hot Mike returns right after this.